Here we are, guys. Welcome to Bish Cam. Fish with Bish. There's Spartacus. Oh, gilly, gilly, gilly. I should pepper by the sea. It's gillying for me today. <laughs> right, let me just sit down, Dan. Pass him out. Yeah, you sit down. I, I, yeah, you sit down. Right, it's all right, guys. Didn't have the camera set up. Um, already had one. First one in. This is the second one in. <sighs> lovely, lovely. Common. Look at that. Fin perfect. Beautiful fish. I'm not going to get him out, guys. I'm not going to. I'm not going to stress him out anymore because he's been in the net for a little bit. So let's get him back in. You on, son. And look at the lovely day we've got. It's freezing cold, I've got to be honest. Cold enough for me to put another another jacket on. But, uh, right, I'm just going to get myself all organised, guys, and then I'll put the camera back on. Guys, I'm back. Right. Let's get myself organised. After that lightning breakneck speed of a start. Right. Get myself organised. Get myself a coffee. And we'll have a chat. I'll just let that... The swim calmed down because that that carp's just gone flying through. So I got three swims on the go today. I've got well, no four. Sorry, I've got one which in directly in front of me at uh, about eight meters. No, about seven meters, I'd say, directly in front of me, which is where I've just caught them two from, and that's where I'm starting. Um, but if you notice that the sun is moving around, I'll, I won't be able to fish that all day. And I'll have to stop for a short while. I've got another one out to this side, which I've plumbed, obviously. And that's just about five metres. And then I've got this, this little, at the edge of these reeds here. And just at the edge of that tree there, which that fortunately that is the same depth. So, right, let's get myself organised. Let's get fishing. Don't know where me chatting. Right, float. I'll give you the rig. Seeing as I'm here, um, another NGT 4x14. But I'm, only, I'm using number nine shots on here. I've got two up by the float, and then I've got another two. Oh, I've lost one. I must have lost one with that fish there. So I'm going to just put another number nine. I'm using four number nines at the minute. And I'll pro possibly put... No, I had three down here. Let me just put two more on. And I've got three number nines down by the hook. Which is only a size 18, by the way. Oh, feathers in. Right, so they, oh, that one's just come off. My God. Right, let me, because I'm not, I can't remember now. So I'm going to have to test this with a, with a bait on. Because I'm using Fuka Naturals on the hook, on a size 16 hook. And because it's a size 16 hook, what I want is an edge. So I'm going through the top of the pellet, moving it round so I'm on that edge, bringing it round, 
and then if I put that in the sunshine, I'll be able to see it properly. But there's plenty of hooks showing there. So, because I've not been in for a while, what I'm going to do is feed in the pot. So, I'm actually going to put quite a few in the pot because both of the carp I've had today have been quite big and they'll have hoovered up everything that I've got. On the bait tray, I've got frozen maggots. Um, and basically pellets and that's it. I have got some corn. I'm just going to drop two of the food curry in there. Not feeding those, I'm just literally putting a couple in just to show the show the fish what the what's going on. Right, so let me just sort this out again. Sort the pole out. The pole I'm using is a Matrix Max. It's not one of the really ultra light ones, but it suits my purpose. It's an all purpose pole, this. Suits me. Right, I don't want to make a lot of noise with the with the feed. So I'll just drop that in, lift mine up, let it drop down in a straight line, straight on top of where it is. I do need another number nine on there, don't I? Yeah, guys, always bring a, a nice warm drink with you. Whether it be tea, soup, bovril, whatever it is, coffee. But always have have something with you. You warm up your core. Oh, that's nice. A bit of toe on the water. Just give you a context of when this video has been being filmed it's just after storm <laughs> wherever it is what was the storm called dad Fun? what was the last storm called no wherever it was but the uh, the pool water's high Ooh. a little knock there the pool water's high There we are, and we're in again. Right, I'm taking it easy. Taking it easy, Governor. Let's bring him in. He's not red either, I don't know even when I why I pulled that up like that. It's not the biggest fish in the world this one. But when it's this cold. Yeah, I'll give you a bit of context guys. It's uh November the seventh, I think it is. There he is. Well, just check this, because um, I don't want to mess with the depth too much. Let's just see where he's actually. Let's see where he's actually um, hooked. You watch, I bet he really watch it's the hook now. All right, son. It's all right, fella. Thought he would. No, he hasn't. Right, let's have a look. I just want to. Just inside the mouth there. I might need to disgorge your other. I won't be able to do it with my finger. Hang on.
No, let's not miss the bass. Four sips, nurse. There he is. And we'll get him back. Look at that in the sunshine. The water's lovely and clear. It's clearing up because we're getting colder. As I say, when you're size 18 hook, you don't need big hooks. Right, after 50, 60 pounders there. After three and a half, four pound fish. Right, so let's let's check that. Let's get another another bait on. As I say, we've got frozen maggots. Oh, dead maggots. Let's put this. I'll show you in the sunshine. You get a better idea. So we've got the end, what I'm after is a, an edge so that I can put that in and I turn it round whoops went in and tore it that turn the hook round and there we go and there we go right, as I say, you saw the size of that fish, I'm going to put some more bait out I'm not going to mess about today. Right, there we go. This one's not as big at all, so let's, let's draw him in. I think it's a roach. Oh no, skim it. slime. Look at the slime in the sunshine. Look. Right. Um, doing the net. Right, there we go. Perfectly hooked. Middle of the lip. Let's have a look at him. There he is. Try and get him in the sun. Massive eye. Big fins, but they don't seem to use them, they just come in. So, let's get him back in. And let's sort the first of all the slime off my hands, and then the warning slime. Remember what I think, guys, that uh, I think the slime is a, a mark of a stressed, stressed fish. And if it's on your hooklet, look at that. So, what I do. Let's get that out. So push it so it all gathers till you get to the knot of the the hook and it should stop then. Sometimes it goes up the even further up the line. But make sure there's absolutely none on your hook length. It does cause, I think, you to stop catching. Right, I reckon we've still got time on this one. Let's put some pellets in. Quite a few, but I'm not putting any of the, the feed bait in. Let's get that above there. Let's get that reattached. Oh, he's going to be on that tree. Bonus. While they're still there, I'd rather carry on fishing this, this one and save the other one for later on which will be my maggot line. So this is the pellet line. Started off very negatively. But now picked it up a little bit. Let's let them drop past my, my feed pellet. And then drop it in just behind them. 
So that's arrived at the same kind of time. And I'm just going to lift that, drop it again. I keep having to remind myself that it is sort of late autumn fishing. Oh, here we go. We're in again, guys. Don't feel like a bream this time. Don't feel particularly big. It's not bad. Get him up. Let's have a look. There he is. A little common. Well, we're not doing too bad here, guys, are we? He's got a bit of a bit of a cut on his side there. Guys, Just giving you the eye. There's hardly any hook in there. Thank God for barbless hooks, eh? Let's have a look at him. Come here. He Come here, you buffoon. There he is. Look at little fish. Let's get him back. I don't want to get him too stressed. This fishing don't get any simpler than this, guys. A pot full. Oh, let me put it hook back on first. Out. Let me put that other nine on because it is too high. All right, so we've got a bite on. <coughs> How simple is that? Hookable bait, fishery pellets, a position picked on the far bank, the length to the end of my elbow and the end of the pole. Drop that down, drop the pellets in, lift mine up, wait and then drop it at the same time that they're arriving. So there we go. That's a bit better. Putting that number nine on at the bottom has helped. I'm not quite in the danger zone there. I've moved the float over. Summit's so so playing with it. Maybe a second or two, and then I'm going to lift and draw it back to where I want it to be. Draw that back. There. And then the 
there's a little bit of toe on the water. I'm just going to hold it back as if you would on the toe of a river. Each bite, when it's been still, has come around the 50 count. pulled out of the fish there. Right, so let's get that back in. No, it's going to get... What I'm going to do guys, I'm going to start feeding up the, the maggot line in case I can't fish this for much longer. A few fish moving there. bring this in. Things aren't happening so it's time to make a change. So I'm just gonna put this hook into it. Oops. Take the cup off, because I'm going to need that. Gonna do, guys. I'm, uh, I'm gonna go in a bit more, a bit more gung ho. Nice little handful and a good, good mix up of dead reds, and then I'm gonna move over to this other swim. And I've got it at that tree over there. And I've got it on the, I'm holding the, the seam of that pole there. Okay. Get the is it this one? Is it this one? Yeah, it is. It's this green, green some steam. I mean, green some steam. The green elastic. Well, what I'm going to do here. This is a slightly bigger hook, size 16 hook. I'm going to put. Two 
two dead reds on. No, I'm not. I'm going to put three dead reds on. I'm going to check that out. If I get no response, if I get no response straight away. Floated away straight away. Right. I'm not forgetting about the other. The long swim. I'm not forgetting about that. Bro, I think I might go back to that. Like, give it a chance to develop. I'll put a few more. Right, and there we are, we're in there. That's on maggots, that was three maggots, guys. So it pays to, to change your swims, check round, see what's going on. Let's see what fish this is. Don't feel like a biggie. I love this green elastic. Right, there we are. There we are, guys. Not much editing on this one, eh? Oh, I've got him under the chin. I often wonder how they get caught like that. I just wonder whether they they just spat the maggot out. Let's put a couple of dead reds on. A couple of dead reds on. Let's have a look at him. Guys, let's get him back. Get him back in. Right. Wipe of the ends. Now, I took the the pot off the other one, and I think I'm going to have to be quite aggressive with the feeding, even though it's. As I say, it's early. About 40 or 50 maggots there. There's some pellets to go with it. It's a mishmash taking about. Right. Holding that, that seam. Dropping it down, don't want to make loads of noise. Lift it up. I'm sure if I laid this in, I'd be picking up a rod or two and a roach, maybe. Right, and there we are. You could, oh, there we go. Come in again. As I say, I did pre bait this. It's a lovely rod, I think. Let's have a look at him. Yeah, it's a lovely rod. Right. Let's get me.
<laughs> I'll put that in there for now. And there we go, guys. I know I've, I've told you the difference between a rud and a roach, but this one is absolutely perfect to show you. So, they tend to be a bit more a bit more vivid in colour. They've got a green back. He's got bright red fins. And the mouth is the biggest, biggest thing. If you look, he's hardly got a lip at all on the top. That's not a, that's not um, a problem or something that's happened to him. That's just how they are, because they're top feeders. Oh, lovely rud that was, Dad. Lovely rud. Right then. Oh, hang on a minute, what's going on here? Put that down there. Put it down there, Dad. To... Well, that's it, and there's a tatty old... What's it on there? What have we got here? Oh, stupid little... Look at him. Idiot. We ain't an idiot, is he? <laughs> little stripey. Go on, son. You get out of here. Let's put some dead reds on. What I do do is I tend to with the dead maggots. I'll drop a couple onto me onto me trousers if I've got these trousers on, so I can see. One on my ones here that's still got a little bit alive. Right, I've got three on. Drop that down there. Let's put a few maggots in here. Because these aren't small fish that are with rocks up. Some pellets on the top. Once again. Um Lining up with that tree, I've got my hand on the seam, drop that down, drop that in, lift this up, just let it follow them down. I'll tell you about the rig on this one after the next fish. There we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh, and I missed the bat. I missed the bat. You missed the bat. Again. I'm going to lift and drop. Should have waited then.
Not mine again. See what I got this time. That took a little bit longer then. So I'm, I'm, I don't want to loose feed. It's a nice roach, eh? I don't want to loose feed. Yeah, look at this for a roach. Beautiful. Look where he's hooked as well. Top middle. There he is. As you can see, the lip is different, and the and the fins are different. Give me the eye. It's all right, fella. I'll get you back. And as you can see, the lips are sort of dead straight in line with each other. So let's get him back. Thanks for coming, Mr. Roach. Oh, the fish are cold today. Right, what I'm going to do... I'm not going to put any more maggots in this time. Just going to put pellets. Because I want to feed the other swim and then I'll put the maggots straight into the other one. Right, so let me feed this swim. And then I'll drop this back to the sea. The tree, and then so this one's not being fed this time. What I'm going to do an experiment, I'm going to lay that maggot in, so... Because if there are rudder around, that, they'll have took that on the way down. There we go. Oh, lay it again. And then that maggot's falling slowly, the maggots are slowly falling through the water in an arc. She's giving them top feeding fish a chance to get it. Right, I think what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to feed, because it seems to be... Oh, that looked like it was going there. It seems to be that... I'm going to put quite a few maggots in this time. Line up with the tree, line up with the seam, drop that down, and out. Get my maggots in with those. 
good thing about using dead maggots is I know that when they hit the bottom they're not going to burrow into the the silt or go underneath any leaves or any debris they're just going to sit where they fall What I might do is just go back to the other swim. Give this one a chance to rest there. Oh, there we are, and we're in again. I think what we've got to try and do is give them a chance to find the bait on the bottom. That's a magnificent roach, that is. That is a lovely roach. Look at that, Dad. Yeah, that is a stunner. Look at that. Look where the look where the hook is as well, guys. Dead centre, top of the lip. Benefit of doing your proper... Um, oh, look at that. Plumbing the depth properly. Look at him or her. Wow. Get him in the sunshine. Look at that. Beautiful fish. Both sides. You can see here, guys, with the lateral line that runs down the middle of them there. Just get it. He's got some lice on him. Just get the lice off. Beautiful fish. Let's get him back. What a gorgeous fish. Beautiful. Oh, sod off. That little perch is better. Oh, no, he's gone. Right, let's put some, some pellets in. Put a few maggots in. Because it, if that's the quality of the roach, beautiful. This is, I know I say it every time, but this is a pretty neglected pool. This we never see many people on, do we, Dad? When we fish it, and it's such fun. If you're a pleasure fisherman. I'd say it's probably the best pool of the complex. If you want some nice big carp, and they have got some here, they've got some lovely carp and some lovely carp fishing, but you want a mixed bag. Just going to lift this up slightly. You want a mixed bag of fishing. The woodland pool is the one. What I have noticed here is on this swim, it takes about a minute before there's a bite. Or any indication.
communication there. I'm going to lift and drop. Pick the right pegs today, didn't we, Dad? Weather wise. Not sat in the bloody shade. Oh, there we go. So, this is going to be a bream when I pick it up. Maybe not. Oh, he's woke up. Let's keep it low. Snuck him in there, I did. Snucked him in. Snucked him in. If you didn't need proof, it was autumn. There we are, he's covered in. He's in, in disguise. Again. So, no, this is 16, sorry, on this on this pick, on this one. Only a size 16 up. You don't need massive hooks to catch these fish. Look. Beautiful, look at them scales, not a scale out of place. Come on son, let's get you back in. And there he is, he's away. He backed out of there. Beep, beep, beep. What I'm going to do guys, I'm not going to put a bait on there for a second. I'm just going to... Put some pellets in there. I'm gonna feed that other swim. And I think they will still be over there. And I want another option in case these guys on this one stop. Get a bait on. A couple of dead reeds. Pick out the better ones. Because there are better ones. Some are plumper than the others. I'll just we'll stick with two. Let's put some in the pot there. <laughs> oh dear, there's still a few left in there, so. Oh. No, there's not. I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna feed that again. Just put a few. There you go, it. I'm not feeding those edges yet. Right, I've not put any pellets in this time. So let's drop that down. Lift that up. 
can follow them down. Trying to keep the the rig as straight as possible. So it hits the bottom. Now because I've only fed using the pot, literally the the bait there is within two foot a yeah, two foot circle at most. So those fish are all coming in on the same same spot. If it's a bit more hectic, I might move them about a little bit. Oh, and here we go. It's gone again. Another beautiful roach, Dad. Here he is, top lip again. There he is again, the sun's gone in. Get a different view. Look at that. What a beauty. And then the sun comes out. Beautiful.
Oh, Dad. Dad, look. It's a rud. Nice big old rud. Look at him. Dad. Guys, beautiful wood. So you ignore these pools at your peril. No one fishes for these. Look at that. What a beautiful fish. Let's get him back. What a beauty. Dead reds on here. So I'm probably swap it more aggressive fishing now. More aggressive feeding. I don't think this fish knows it's hooked yet. Oh I think I've got him in the tail. No I haven't. Yes I have. Got away. Oh, ho, ho. he got away. Right, let me show you the rig, guys. It's the Drenum Carp one, point two of a gram. And I've got number nine shot, uh, one probably six, eight inches below, and then another ten inches to that one, then four inches, four inches, and four inches. So it's the last 
bit is a bit of a slow drop. Let's just put another two deads on. Deads in there. And some pellets. Feeding, dropping onto the feed. As I say, because I've only fed using the the feeder cup, that feed can only be in a, within a two a two foot circle. Again, just getting back for a lift. Another lovely roach. Look at that. A few maggots this time, no, no pellets. That roach was gorgeous. They're all pretty good. After this one, I'm going to feed that six meter, seven meter for swim wherever it is. I don't know about that. That was a bit of a, a chub boy. And again, so this seems to have turned into a bit of a silver fish hole. This one, again, top middle of the mouth, another gorgeous roach. I'm not going to feed this time. Pheasant over the way. I know he's in his coot.
has gone for a comfort break or a cry. Not catching much at the minute. Slowed right down. It's doing quite well this morning. Lion bar. One for now, one for later. The one for me, one for Dad. Dad, what half a lion bar? Fucking typical, any? Swapsies? Yeah, I'll have half a lamb. A lamb? Is there anything on it? Cheap's gate. See, I've got caramel and crispy bits on mine. And you're just offering a straightforward bit of bread and a bit of cut price ham. Yeah.